Good day, this is Brad Caleb, PhD. And my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. That means very simple that we continue to work on the proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. And if you ask me why, for the simple fact that I took 60 years before I understood that no matter that I was raised as a Christian, brought up in an environment of Christianity, went to a Sunday school, Bible school, seminary, preached for 12 years in the ministry all over the world, to find myself in a position where I stood for many, many years, over a decade before judges in Canada, defending what I believed in was based on the truth and to discover that what I was taught was basically baloney. The judge sentenced me and told me, although your intent was right, the end you were wrong, and therefore I sentence you for six years time. And that is how my eyes opened. And I tell you folks, this was not fun. Some of you say, well, what does that have to do with me? I like to you to comment below and let me know what kind of video you would like to see on this channel and what I can do to help you on this channel. Let's check it out what we have for today.
Indeed, we have all kinds of questions. What is going on around the elections of the United States, QAnon and all kinds of other questions about reality. What is reality today? There seems to be a big confusion about what is true and what is not. My goal is to take your insight and to the next level. I still remember the most frustrating moment, standing in front of that judge. And I tell you, in the Canadian court, it is very simple. You are accused of something, you go to a judge, the judge takes a look at the case, either throws it out or he will move you up to the next level. With me, I had a friend that had discovered that my business was growing and I had gotten a hold of something that was worth billions of dollars. The only problem I had is I had to come up with a little down payment of a couple of million dollars. And at that time, I was definitely not in the market. But I would made a commitment and my wife and I, we prayed together with the investors and we believed that we were going to get that. And so in a very short little while, I raised millions of dollars by the grace of God. That is what I believed because that is how I was raised. You believe, you confirm and you go to work and that is how you get results. The problem that I had was my friend was just in a different category. Although he claimed he went to church because we prayed together, but he had a problem. He was a multi multi-millionaire. He owned a few goodies in the property where we, and not the property in the country where we lived in Canada, London, Ontario. And he wanted certain things. He wanted half of my business. For that, he would make his place available, a 15 dollars And he said, but we can raise millions of dollars in no time. But for that, this is what I want. And when I told him that I didn't feel comfortable doing that, he told me that he was the head of the Freemasons. And he would tell me that if I would not do what he wanted, I would regret it for the rest of my life. And I left not to return to that place anymore. I tell you, I had no idea what Freemasons were at that time. I had heard about certain things, weird stuff, but we were friends for over 10 years. And he was trying to do whatever it took. I went to the court. The court threw it out, said there's nothing wrong with this guy. There's nothing wrong with what he's done. Everything is fine. The second time it was thrown out. Third time, they moved it to another court. In the process, I'd spent over $10 million on lawyers. And I was kind of, that was my limit. I couldn't borrow any more money. I had billions of assets, but I couldn't collateralize it because that was in the process. And so now we're stuck. So the judge, who was now one of the buddies of my friend, he also decided to make it a little tougher and he refused me to get any lawyers anymore. If I couldn't pay for them, they wouldn't give us through legal aid lawyers. Okay, so I did what I always do, grab a book, learn, and we learned the law. And with the learning and the education I got, I started to understand something. I call it PMS. P stands for politics, M stands for money, and the S for spirituality or religion. And that is why restorative justice, deception protocol for the prodigal son started. Because gradually, over a period of time, I came to the understanding what religion was really all about. All you had to have was money or political clout. And that is what we're seeing right now. There is a total confusion at a level that is not even funny. We have preachers standing out for Mr. Trump. This is what God says and this is what God says and therefore you need to do that. But you know, in the lessons that I learned, and don't forget, it took 12 years. I lost the case, I won the case, I lost the case, and I won an appeal. So we did our utmost best, but in the process, we learned the basics of law. You always have evidence. And if you have evidence, then you make sure that you have precedence that you can relate another case to it so that therefore you can make your point and you stick to your one point. Don't go off to five tangents, but stick to your one point. And what is that one point? God is an awesome God, there is only one God. And 
this is where Christianity fails, folks. Because over a period of time, I was stripped of everything I ever believed in. And why? Because I was confronted with the truth. What was reality? What was it? Although I intend to do right, I can still be wrong. And this is why restorative justice started for me. Because I learned that God had made a way for us. But you and I, we, we need to understand that. And if we do not understand that we are full, like what you're seeing right now, total confusion. And the Bible says this, if we cannot understand that confusion does not from God, does not come from God, folks, then we have a major problem. God is an awesome God, and you are an awesome person, but there is a problem if we cannot connect the two. And how do we do that? By understanding that we are a prodigal son, that we have goofed up, we were laying flat in the mud or in the crud or in the shit, if that is what you better understand, of the pigsty. Yes, folks, I found myself sitting wandering in a cell for maximum security, sentenced for six years, because I dared to say no to a Freemason. And gradually my eyes opened up and opened wider. And as I start to understand that we've been fooled around for so long, it started off in 325 AD, Anno Domino, by Constantine the first, when he dictated, this is what I want you to do. It was not created by the birth of Jesus in a little uh, Bethlehem. Wonderful songs from the angels. Yes, it did happen. But no, it was not Jesus Christ. It was Jesua Hamashiach. He was the one that was restored to justice. He came to follow the will of God. And that is what God desires from us. We do what he wants us to do, not what we think he wants us to do. And that is why we have this confusion. I want you to think about this. I understand that so many think, why in the world do we have to listen to all the baloney what is going on? There are people that are so confused. We have a pandemic. Folks, do you know where the pandemic is coming from? We can listen to Mr. Trump and he will say, well, it comes from China. I have seen papers, whether they're right or wrong, I'm not 100% sure, but they look very, very authentic. And that this was designed in an American laboratory. It was shipped to a Canadian laboratory and then ended up in Wuhan. So who is the creator? Who is the owner of the virus that we are all dealing with? And did it run out of hands? We don't know. But we do know one thing. That every time we fail the Ten Commandments. The place where God wanted to restore the relationship between the Jewish people and God. The Creator. They were partying. They had no time to receive the covenant of the Ten Commandments. And because the covenant was destroyed by Moses in it. He was so heated up. He was so mad. He threw him down. And as they pulverized, God says, it is okay. I will give them the commandments. Yes, folks. He said, I will give them the Ten Commandments. But that meant they were for the children of darkness. See, the covenant was for the children of light. And that is where the difference started. How do I know that? I kept on looking and trying to understand why everything I was taught became in court a joke. It did not matter whether I brought it up or not, because according their law, according their and whatever they came up with. Yes, folks, my eyes opened the hard way. But what about you? You are right now facing a pandemic, and the pandemic is a payment to somebody that does not deserve it, but he stole from you, Satan. Because each time when we go against the Ten Commandments, if we, in other words, swear, if we steal, if we lie, if we do something that does not make sense and goes against the Ten Commandments, we are indebted. And you know to whom? We are indebted to Satan. 
And that is why the Father paid this. The price was the blood of the Son of God, Yeshua HaMashiach, also known by many as Jesus. And when Jesus opened the door and he said, this is the way, the truth and the light, this is the path I want you to follow, not the broad way. You know what we did? We went just our wonderful way. We followed Yeshua and for the next 300 years, everything was honky-dory till the Emperor of Rome ended up giving us an option. Either I kill you or you become a Christian. And automatically the majority, oh, praise the Lord, I'm a Christian. Many didn't even know what it meant. And this has been going on for centuries. And now with the confusion of Mr. Trump, thinking that he is Cyrus or whoever people have told them, with the baloney of Christians telling him, this is what God showed me, this will happen to you. They don't know that what they're doing is maybe with a good intent, but it's based on a lie. Because God says, I want you to be on that small and narrow path. And why is that so important for us? Because that is where the presence of God is. And it is under the presence and in the presence of my Father, God Almighty, that is where we will continue to learn to walk and become strong and become His children. But if you want to go the broad way, Christianity, well, folks, you will hear, He's coming, He's coming, and who is coming? Yeshua HaMashiach. And when He comes, He has given us an example of ten virgins, five wise and five foolish ones. Guess what many of us will hear? If you are not following that small path, if you're not on the way, the truth and the light, folks, you will hear that God will not know you. And I try to avoid that. And that's why I'm making those videos. It has taken me 60 years of fooling around and doing the things I was told to do. In the last 10 years, I've been writing it down, understanding books that were written in Aramaic, that were written around the time that Yeshua was on earth. I finally got a hold of them and started to understand what Yeshua wants us to do. He wants us to succeed. He wants us to take control over our lives. But that means that we have to surrender the proper way. And folks, I've lived in different parts of the world and I had a wonderful time. And this year I will be 71 years of age. I was created like you were created to live eternal. We don't have to die because something bad happens. We can be victorious, but that victory comes at a price. And the price is called repentance. And if you are ready for it, please seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness shall be added unto you. And remember, tough times never last. But tough people, they do. God bless you. Bye for now.
Thank you.